Straight all day.com. Now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there, boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve is yet to occur. And on top of all this, you get to use those of personal initiative that is to go get an energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. Then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, techniques, and one unifying philosophy all under one umbrella we got a bunch of books as well you can see them over my shoulder if you're watching this on video all under the umbrella that is called work on your game my name is dre baldwin also known as dre all day and welcome to the show and today's topic we are going to get to the bottom of it of a burning question this is something that people have been asking the streets been wanting to know dre can you come clean can you let us know are you liberal or conservative <laughs> let's address this let's get to the bottom of this here today. Now, before I get into this, let me tell everybody, I have a text message line where I send out a daily, from which I send out a daily motivation text every single day. If you would like to receive it, just send me a text right now at this number 305-384-6894. Once we confirm you, you'll be in, you'll get every daily motivation text that I send out again every morning straight to your phone. I send other stuff there as well, other goodies, other perks and bonuses, which you'll find out once you're in there. So just text me again, 305-384-6894. Now this topic, is Dre liberal or conservative? Now, there's a funny thing about this, this very topic. I personally am not uh, heavily involved in, I'm not, actually not, I would take the word heavily out. I am not involved in politics at all. I have never claimed any political party or political affiliation. I do speak on stuff that may involve politics, but I don't speak on it from a, like, a policy point of view or, hey, go with this because it's Democrat or go with this because it's Republican or anything like that, or this person, never done anything like that. But I will speak on things again from the work on your game philosophy point of view when it comes to certain people. Now, again, the work on your game philosophy can apply to people. I don't care if it's a basketball player, if it's a, an entertainer, if it's, it could be a politician, it could be a regular person working at the register at Target or CVS. I can apply, I can take something that happens and then run it through the, the filter of the work on your game philosophy and speak on it. So that's how I've been able to speak on things like, like I talked about um, Mr. Ibram Kendi's How to Be Anti-Racist book and the, the ridiculous conclusions that I saw in Robin D'Angelo's book. And I didn't do a whole episode on that one. That one didn't give me as much ammo, but the, we could talk about somebody like Trump. I did episodes where I talked about him or talk about things that just are happening politically, whether it comes to whether it's something that involves uh, social issues like the whole summer of social justice we had in 2020 or whatever may come happen moving forward. Like I've talked about, done some episodes where I talked about COVID here on the show, but I'm always relating them back to things that connect to the work on your game philosophy. So even if I talk about politics, it's not because I'm being political or at least in, not in, the, in the government type of sense of political. So. The funny thing about this topic and this question I'm going to answer here today, and this is kind of a tongue in cheek topic, but I am going to directly address it. It was just this year in 2021, at least when I'm recording this, I don't know when you're listening to this, that two people gave me labels that made me even think about this because I never considered myself. I never considered myself liberal. I never considered myself conservative, never considered myself Democrat or Republican, never. But I was talking to this guy on a coaching call a basketball player, matter of fact, about, uh, how long was this? This had to be around maybe March or April of 2021. And he said to me, this is later in the conversation, we were talking about a lot of business and professional stuff, but later in the conversation, he said, Dre, I know I could talk to you, you know, about certain things because I have a lot of conservative views too. That's the way he said it. He said, I got a, I got a lot of views that are kind of conservative as well. And I didn't say anything in a moment when he was saying it, but I thought about that a lot that day after I got off the call with this guy. What he, what he said as well, like, he said too, like, I have conservative views. I didn't know that my views were conservative. I thought, I'm, I figured the things that I'm talking about, I'm just looking at things you know, objectively, from my perspective objectively, and just giving you no real conversation on what I'm seeing and how I see things. I didn't know it was considered conservative. So that was the first thing. That was the first thing that happened because I never saw myself as that. Then. This is this probably happened wasn't too much longer after that. It might have been before, and that's probably a little bit after. It was maybe around May of this same year that I was on a Zoom call with a bunch of people, and it was actually one of the mastermind groups I'm a part of. And 
this woman in the chat, she said, um, who in this group is liberal? We weren't talking specifically about, we weren't talking about politics. I wouldn't be in a, a uh, mastermind group that talks about politics. We were talking about something, probably some social topic that happened to be going on. And this woman in the chat said, who else in the group is a liberal? And I responded in the chat. I said, well, what is a liberal? Can you like define what a liberal means so I know if I qualify or not? How do I know if I'm liberal or not? And a woman wrote back in the chat. She said, LOL, Dre, I know you're not liberal. And I laughed. I'm like, uh, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know that I was not liberal. I didn't know that this was, I didn't even know people were giving themselves these labels. I know that people give, them, give themselves these labels when they pay a lot of attention to politics and they're talking about it all the time and writing about it and they're going back and forth. Well, hey, the liberals think this and the Democrats think that and conservatives are like this and Republicans are like this and people who are staunchly on one side or another or they've been on a certain side their entire lives or they always vote on a certain side and things like that. I understand that those type of individuals Maybe some of you who are listening to this right now, I know that they label themselves and they maybe like to conveniently label others, but I never even thought about that. It never really crossed my mind. But since these two things did happen this year and since now it's become, and I talked about this um, not too long ago when I talked about a lot of the things that we used to keep private, now we're making public. Now we're telling everybody all of our business, episode 2015. When I told you that certain things like people's medical history, what you're doing in the doctor's office and what we do in the voting booths, these kind of things used to be private and nobody talked about them. And it was it was disrespectful to even ask a person about these things. Nowadays, people are putting these things front and center in their mind. They want everybody to know what they do medically. They want everybody to know uh, who they're voting for and what side they're on and politically and things. Now, again, things are kind of being flipped upside down. So. I figure I might as well uh, jump on this train. This is all tongue in cheek. I'm being not all of it, but what I just said there. This is, I'm gonna jump on this train in a sarcastic way and let's discuss, am I liberal or am I conservative? Let's get into it, point number one. Topic once again, Dre, are you liberal or conservative? Let's get the definitions here. Now, depending on who you ask, if you ask 100 different websites or 100 different people to define liberal and conservative, you're probably gonna get probably about 95 different answers. So these are answers that I got in looking up what it means to be liberal and also what it means to be conservative. Now, on each of these points, there are like bullet points on each one. I'm going to give you these bullet points from both liberals and conservatives, and I'm going to tell you whether or not I agree with these points. So you can kind of draw your own conclusions about me and my liberalism or conservatism based on which points I agree with or disagree with or have questions about. Let's start with definition of being liberal. Here are some bullet point definitions of what makes a liberal. Listen closely. Willing to respect or accept the behavior or opinions different from one's own. Absolutely, yes. I am willing to accept behavior and opinions that are different from mine. That is one of the reasons why I became an entrepreneur. Because I like to, I like to do things my own way and I respect and appreciate when other people do things their own way. And as a matter of fact, it kind of annoys me when I see people going along to get along, which I talked about like five days ago at episode 2020, why people go along to get along and they're just following the crowd and doing what everybody else is doing instead of doing things their own way. So I absolutely, that is a liberal bullet point. I 100% agree with that. Open to new ideas. Absolutely, yes. I'm an ideas person. I'm, I actually you know write books and make podcast episodes telling you how to come up with ideas so that you can put your own stuff and your own work out there into the world. So I'm 100% open to this concept of uh, putting new ideas out there and I like seeing other people do it. Next, relating to or denoting a political and social philosophy that promotes individual rights. Do I believe in individual rights? I 100% do. I think you've heard me talk about that enough to know that I 100% am in on individual rights. I talked about this in episodes 2005 and 2006 where I share with you six fallacies exposed by the COVID situation, whatever you want to call it, and that individuals do have rights and the choices that they're going to make. Civil liberties. Yes, I also agree with that. Democracy and free enterprise, meaning that we make choices based on majority rule, that's democracy, and free enterprise, meaning it's open for people to go out and just do business how they want to do it and let, let's say, let's just call it may the best man win. That's the way I'm going to interpret the phrase free enterprise. You may interpret it differently, but either way, I agree with it. Yes. So all of these liberal bullet points, let's just call them. Every one of those that I just 
All of those that I just read off to you, I agree with every single one of them. Those are all liberal bullet points. Now, there are others that I'm not listing here. They're, you could get a thousand depending on who you ask again. But I agree with all of these liberal bullet points. Now, let's go to the conservative side. Now, this again, these are not a comprehensive list of everything that represents a liberal or a conservative. I don't think the list actually has an end. I think those lists are infinite. But these are some points that I want to just point out just so we can lay some, some groundwork here some foundational points of view here. So conservative, this is again, according to some information that I found. Now, if you are a conservative or a liberal and you don't think these points are accurately depicting what a conservative or a liberal is, I understand because as I said earlier, if you ask 100 people, you only get 95 different answers. So it says conservatives are averse to change or innovation. I am a no on that one. I am not averse to change or innovation. I actually like change and innovation again this is why i am i am taking place in this this kind of new economy that just came to exist like less than two decades ago of being on the internet and putting your material out through these apps and platforms that did not exist even 15 years ago and we're all doing our damn near our entire businesses on them i'm 100 percent open to change and innovation and holding traditional values they say conservatives hold traditional values now, that one is a, a question mark. I got to put a big question mark on holding traditional values because what the hell does that even mean? I think, again, this is another one of those points that if you ask 100 different people, you're going to get not even 95. You're going to get 100 different answers on what traditional values means. But don't fret because we, we got a lot more to talk about in this episode and we'll see maybe what some of those traditional values are and we'll talk about it. So that one is a question mark. But that is a conservative point of view is holding traditional values. Another one says conservatives favor free enterprise. So this is something they actually have in common with the liberals is that free enterprise is on both sides. So I guess everybody likes free enterprise. Private ownership. Yes, I'm 100 percent on free enterprise and private ownership as opposed to what public ownership, like the government owning stuff. No, the government shouldn't own a damn thing. So 100 percent times two on free enterprise, private ownership and socially traditional ideas. That's another question mark. What exactly does that mean? socially traditional ideas. This is one that I need a little bit more clarification on before I can go deeper into you know, what exactly these socially traditional and traditional values, what does that mean? I wasn't able to get enough information on that or maybe it was too, too much information for me to list it all here. So that's as far as I can go on a conservative and liberal bullet points, but this is only the first point of today's episode. So I don't think we can draw any conclusions from this just yet. Let's continue. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is Dre, liberal or conservative? Number two, this website called Diffin.com, D-I-F-F-E-N.com. What they do is they provide side-by-side -side comparison on anything. So you could say, now what's the difference between liberal and conservative? Push the button, and then it gives you all these bullet points. So what's the difference between, I don't know, the Eastern Hemisphere and the Western Hemisphere? And push the button, and they give you all these differences. So I found this website, and this is what they say. Politically, they say that liberals believe that the government should provide, should do and provide more for other people. And then they say conservatives believe, on the other hand, that government should be smaller and impose its will less on people. They also believe that conservatives, they also say that conservatives believe in a literal interpretation of the Constitution, period. So let's just talk about these points right here and where I stand on them so you can draw your own uh, conclusions on the liberal versus conservative as far as as far as it applies to me they say that the liberals say government should do and provide more for people this point on this point i disagree i don't think the government should do and provide more for other people one of the reasons why is because first of all this whole this whole brand this whole philosophy of working your game if you've been listening to this show for even a month you know that my thing is always bringing it back to the individual. It's all about individual ownership, individual accountability, individual responsibility. So the only thing that the only thing that America grants you is life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right? Those three things. Life. You're allowed to live here. You're, if you're here, you're a citizen. You are free. Your liberty and the pursuit of happiness, not guarantee of happiness. Pursuit of happiness, not guarantee of success. The pursuit of success. You can go and pursue success from wherever you start. Now, your family, your parents, let's just say, 
or your parents' parents, hey, they might have fucked up and you had to start kind of further behind than other people. Some people, their parents might have did a great job, so they get to start on third base. You start at home plate. You got to start outside of the stadium. You're not even in the stadium. You got to get in the stadium first to even get the home plate. They start at third base. And I'm talking about home plate, like you up the back. You got to go around all the bases. But somebody else is at third base. They only got to get you know, one place to get the home plate and score. And not everybody gets the same starting point. And this is this is in is this is an inequality? Yes, it is. Is it an inequity? And you no, know, I get those sometimes the way people use those words confused. E equality meaning, let's just give a definition to it. Equality meaning people getting the same chance to do something. And equity meaning the outcome. So let's say equality means the opportunity, and equity means the outcome. Now, does this mean? when some people got to start outside the stadium and some people got to start on third base that there is a difference in equality I mean they're not getting the exact same opportunity because this person has to do less work than the other person the answer is absolutely yes and imbalance and people not all starting at the same point is just a baked in feature of life that is not a mistake that's not a bug of life it's a feature of life think about it you look at anything in life there are going to be these inequalities everybody's not going to start at the same point I don't know if that's equal, inequality or inequity. Whatever way you want to de define it, it doesn't matter. It's not the actual point of this episode. You can define the word however you feel like. It doesn't change my point here. That people are going to start at different points. For example, when I played basketball, I'm six feet, four inches tall. When I played against someone, and I had friends I grew up with who were really good basketball players. And in our teen years, they were better players than me. But they were only, let's say by the time they were fully grown, they might have only grown to maybe 5'11", or 5'7", or 5'9". Did they end up getting the same opportunities in basketball that I did? No, they didn't. Why? And well, two reasons. Number one, I ended up working on my game enough that I was able to find, meet and surpass them skill wise. But also because of my size with the skill that I developed, I got noticed more and I got more opportunities simply because I was more of the more of the prototypical size of someone who could go to the next level and next level and next level. And that's how I ended up becoming a professional athlete. But I know players from my neighborhood who were five, seven, had they been six, four, maybe they would have been pro athletes, too. We didn't they didn't end up in the same space. They might end up playing high school, maybe college, but they didn't go any further than that. It's not my fault. And there's nothing the government can do about that. It's just in, in equality or inequity, whichever word you want to use. Uh, and that is a feature of the system. All right, everybody has to understand this. I'll give you another example. When I got into entrepreneurship, which was around the first time I created something from scratch and sold it, was in around 2008 through 2010. Around that time period, I was still playing overseas, but at there was a point where I found myself a free agent, didn't have a job playing overseas, so I started creating my own products and selling them. I didn't know anything about entrepreneurship. Uh, the first. The lesson I ever got in entrepreneurship was when I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki back in 2000 and it's about 2001, 2002. Now, at this point, I was born in 1982, so I'm 19, 20 years old. This is the first thing I ever heard about entrepreneurship from anybody. My parents did not teach me entrepreneurship. It was not taught to me in any of the schools I went to. I have a business degree from Penn State University. They did not teach me entrepreneurship. I first learned about it by reading Robert Kiyosaki off a book that I bought from somebody for 99 cents on eBay. That's an absolute fact. So are there kids, same age as me, whose parents were entrepreneurs who sat them down and taught them, hey, look, look what, look what mom and dad are doing. We're entrepreneurs. This is what makes it different from having a job. Look, you do this, you do this, you do this. This is the way we do our accounting. This is how you go get the information. These are the people you need to know. Are there kids who were five years old being taught that? When I was five years old, I wasn't being taught it. And then when we both got into the marketplace, they had a head start in information versus me. Of course it was. Is that an inequity or inequality? Yes, it is. But Am I complaining about it? Hell no. And do I want the government to get involved? Fuck no. All I need you to do is get out the way. All right, give me the, all right, there's a book on entrepreneurship. Okay, let me go buy it. Let me go read it. All right, there's somebody with a YouTube channel about entrepreneurship. Okay, let me go subscribe to it and get it. There's a, a conference about entrepreneurship that I can buy a ticket to and I can sit in the audience and I can take notes on everything to get, they say. Okay, let me go to that conference and let me get the game. There's someone giving it out for free. Okay, let me go get it. Someone who wrote a book about it and I can just pay the shipping and I can get the book. Okay, let me go get the book. I, don't got, I ain't got to complain about it. I don't want anyone else to get involved. I don't need you to kind of give me a boost to catch up to the other person. I'd rather, I want to be where I'm at and let me work my way to where I want to get to. That's part of the whole work on your game ethos is sometimes you're going to start behind the eight ball as compared to someone else. It's not that you're in a, in a vacuum. There's nothing fucked up about your situation. What only way that you start to think that something's wrong with it is when 
you look around at where everybody else is at and you see somebody might have started ahead of you and you're like, oh, well, that's not fair. They got to start further ahead of me because their parents did this or they're from this this place or maybe because they're male and I'm female or they're from this country and I'm from that country. Listen, again, that's baked into life. Everybody is unique. Everyone has a unique circumstance. So I don't consider that to be something that the government needs to get into to do and provide more for other people if you happen to be you no know, quote unquote behind another person if you look at my background in sports when i first started playing you no know, nobody in my family was a basketball player nobody taught me how to play nobody took me under their wing the way i developed my game was i went to the courts with my basketball by myself outside there's no gym no membership none of that no YouTube, nobody to learn from. And I just went to the course and just kept trying stuff until I figured it out. And I worked my way into being a good basketball player. Eventually became a professional level basketball player. I just did the work. I just kept showing up until I figured it out. I did the same thing in entrepreneurship. Just kept showing up until I figured it out. If someone had come along and kind of giving, given me something or put me somewhere that I didn't belong, that I had not earned, then I would not have the the qualifications. I want to have the credibility to sit here and talk to you about the kind of things that I talk to you about every single day. This whole work on your game thing. I couldn't speak on this if I hadn't earned my way up the same way that I am encouraging you to do the same and whatever you're doing, no matter what age, no matter what you happen to be involved in. So I don't want the government to get involved in, oh, well, we need to quote unquote level the playing field and make it harder on the people who had an advantage, quote unquote, and easier on the people who had a disadvantage, quote unquote, is not an advantage or a disadvantage until you start looking around at what everybody else has, until you start looking at the food on another person's plate. I just told you in episode number 666 and also again, episode 1579, never let, we never look at the food on another person's plate. If all of us followed that advice, then I wouldn't even have had to say what I just said in the last four or five minutes here is that the only time we start looking at advantage and disadvantage is when we're comparing our situation to somebody else's situation. Well, their situation looks quote unquote easier or they're further ahead. So that means it's unfair. No, it's not unfair. It's just what it is. And you got to figure out how can you make the most of your circumstance? What can you do with where, with where you're at? It has nothing to do with where they're at or what they have or what their parents did or anything like that. So I'm extrapolating this interpretation here between these two things that the liberal side politically believes the government should do more and provide more for people and the conservative side says the government should be smaller and do less all right stop trying to impose his will on people i on that point alone i agree with the conservative side to get the hell out the way government it is not your job to do more for other people your job is to give them protect their life liberty and pursuit of happiness not give them anything just protect their life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. And that's it. Get the hell out of the way. And whatever people do, they do. And it's the decisions and choices that people make, whether it's you, your family, your, your parents, their parents, that can set you up for success or it can set you up to have to work harder to get that success. But there's no such thing as I don't believe in your parents setting you up for failure. I don't believe that's even a thing. Because even if your parents were complete fuck ups by your definition, let's say they were complete fuck ups, your parents were drug addicts or they didn't save any money, they didn't set you up for anything, like you had to start at absolute zero and figure everything out from nothing. They didn't leave you, they didn't leave you an inheritance, you're not a trust fund kid, none of that stuff, right? No, so let's say they didn't do anything to set you up for success. They didn't you know, teach you how to read and write. They weren't paying attention when you went to school. They didn't come to any of the parent-teacher conferences when you were in elementary school. They didn't do anything to set you up. Might have even did things that actually, if you look back on it, might have done things to kind of retard your progress, right? You still have free will and free choice to do what you need to do for yourself and what you can do for yourself. And those challenges that you went through, and let's just say that's the situation with your parents, that actually can make you stronger if you use it the right way. That's what people like me come in and tell you, listen, your circumstances are not an excuse. Your circumstances and what happened before you or the people who are around you are not a handicap to your success. They actually can aid your success depending on the way that you look at them. And when you change your state and your mindset around any circumstance, you can turn it into an advantage or you can turn it into a disadvantage depending on the way that you want to look at the situation. So the whole point that I'm making here is I absolutely agree with the conservative side that the government should not, does not need to get involved in doing things, quote unquote, for people. Another reason why the government shouldn't get involved in doing things for people, because the more government gets involved in things, it slows things down, it's clunky, and the government is very inefficient at doing things. The private sector 
has been proven to do things a lot better and a lot faster and a lot more efficiently than the government does. But maybe we'll get to that later on in this episode. Let's talk more now. We're still on the second point. And the topic is, Dre, are you liberal or conservative? On the conservative side, they also say they want a liber literal interpretation of the Constitution. Not liberal, but a literal interpretation of the Constitution. The Constitution, any of you who have never read it or never know, um, everybody knows that it exists, but you should actually go and read the Constitution and see what it says and understand uh, how amazing of a document it was that the founding fathers put together in anticipating so many of the challenges that will later come that you know, hundreds of years later, people are still uh, reveling at the beauty of this document and the way that it was put together and the forethought that the people who signed that constitution or the people who helped create the constitution rather, the forethought that they had in putting it together. Because one of the challenges that happens today when people are talking about, well, we need to alter and amend the Constitution. You know, a lot of politicians throw these out. We need to amend the Constitution because something's not, usually they say that when something's not working, right? When something's not working in their favor, they want to amend the Constitution so it's easier for them to do what they want to do. And some people have used, and then they get pushback where people say, well, look, the Constitution is written the way it is written for a reason because the Constitution is the set of, is basically the rules of the game. All right, here in America, we, here are the rules of the game. Constitution is basically the rules of how we play America. All right, that is the purpose of the Constitution. But then you have people who will say things like, and usually this is coming from the liberal side, and again, if I get any of this wrong, you let me know. Usually from the liberal side, you get people who say, well, the Constitution is a living document. That's the phrase that has been thrown around. It's a quote-unquote living document, which means... It can be changed as needed over time. So we'll change the document as necessary. It's kind of like a Google Doc. We can change it at over time. Whoever needs to change it, just make changes so it can fit the current situation. All right, life has changed. The world has changed over the last 200 years. Let's change the Constitution so it can fit the way the world has changed. And I disagree with this. I heard a guy named Walter Williams talking about this. And he made a really strong point. And he has a bunch of videos on YouTube. You can find it. And he said, he explained this whole concept of saying, hey, the Constitution is kind of like the rules of how we're going to do things, and it shouldn't be changed as needed. And that point, that's where I agree. I agree with where Walter's interpretation that the Constitution is the Constitution. It's kind of like the rules of the game. How you just want to change the rules? Okay, so things are you know, not working in our favor, so let's just change the rules to make it work in certain ways. Now, I understand making certain adjustments maybe based on let's just say an abuse, if there was an abuse of things or something to just make the situation, uh, how do I word this? It's, a, it's really hard to really figure out how I wanna word this here because you could take something like, let's take the sport of basketball. In basketball, you have certain rules in place when the game first came out, but over time, there have been small adjustments made to the rules. For example, there was no such thing as a three-second rule on offense when basketball first came out, but then you had a guy like Wilt Chamberlain who was just standing in front of the basket and score all the points. They changed the rule a little bit. They altered the rules so that he couldn't just do that because he was unstoppable. He was just dominating the game until they made some change to the rule because otherwise it wouldn't have been fun or fair for anybody else. He was still pretty good after they changed the rule. He was still pretty damn good. So that was a, a slight change they made to the rule, but they didn't make too many if you really look at it, it didn't make too many wholesale changes in how the game is played, even from when it first came out to how it is today. There, are, there have been changes. There have been modernizations of it, but it hasn't been fundamentally changed. That's the, that's the word. It has not fundamentally changed. And the Constitution is the fundamental rules of how we play the game of being this country called America. So I believe that the Constitution should be interpreted literally. And there have been certain topics that have really come into contention. And that's why that conversation comes up. But we'll get to that in a minute. Now, let's move on to economically. We're still on point number two here. We're talking the side-by-side -side comparison, liberal versus conservative. The conservative side economically says the government should tax people less. The government should spend less money. They should incentivize entrepreneurship by giving tax breaks to business owners. Those are the three things the conservative side there's just three points I'm going to offer here economically when it comes to conservatives. Now, the liberal side says, and I'm going to give my assessment in a second. The liberal side says the government should do more for people who have less and they should tax people who have more money in order to pay for helping out the people who don't have money. So people who don't have money should get help from the government and the way the government will help them 
is by taking from the people who have something and giving it to the people who don't have something. More taxes for higher earners. All right, now these points right here, I'm going to weigh on the, I'm going to check the box on the conservative side because what I don't want is the government hoarding over or lording over who's successful, who's not successful. Okay, so the more successful you get, the government is going to take more from you. The more success you create, the government is going to take more from you. And then they're going to take that that they took from you. And they're going to use that to help out the people who have not created as much success as you. That's some bullshit. I don't, I don't agree with that at all. That's some bullshit. That's kind of like if we're, I mean, it's kind of like that story that I told you all a while ago when I was playing video games with my cousin as a kid and I was kicking her ass in this video game and her mom, my aunt, saw me kicking her daughter's ass. So she restarted the game because her daughter was getting her ass kicked and theoretically to give her daughter a better chance to win. And I just kicked her daughter's ass again. My cousin's ass again. It's not my fault that I'm better than you. If I'm better than you at what I'm doing or I have achieved more than you, even if, even if my accomplishments are based on the fact that my parents or my grandparents or my great grandparents they took certain actions that set me up for success and your parents did not take those actions to set you up for success. Therefore, part of the reason, not all of the reason, but part of the reason why I have more success than you, then that ain't the government's business. What are you getting involved for? That person who's at the bottom, listen, somebody in my family at some point had to start at the bottom. And any of you who's read anything on people who have created uh, super high levels of net worth and super high levels of wealth, there is a common... Uh, misnomer, a common misunderstanding. A lot of people think, well, people who have a whole lot of wealth, like let's say ultra wealthy people, like people who get in the Forbes 400, that most of them got their money because it was inherited and they didn't actually earn it. And it's because you know, their great grandparents or ancestors were you know, slave owners and they just stole from everybody. And that's the reason why they make money. That is absolutely false. That is a false narrative that the majority of people who are at that ultra wealthy level, they are all most of them are self-made and you can look this up for yourself. So that's a false narrative that has been thrown around. I think that's coming from the liberal side. You can help me out again. You can let me know if I got any of this incorrect that these people have just inherited it. They didn't earn it. That is not true at all. The majority of them have actually earned it. They earned it from the ground up. They did the work and that's how they got to where they got to. So do I want the government to rob from the rich and give to the poor? Absolutely not. And if someone doesn't have, they don't have a lot. Listen, the the things that you are guaranteed are life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. You can pursue it. Go and pursue it. People are giving the game away. You got books. You have courses. You have podcasts. You have people who are giving this stuff away. Go get the information. People who don't have as much shouldn't be sitting around waiting on the government to help them out and give something to them just because they have less. And they definitely shouldn't do it by taking from the people who have created success. You're basically disincentivizing success. So you're saying oh, the more money you make, we're going to take more from you and we're going to give it to the people who haven't made money. Well, I'm like, well, why would I even want to make money now? Because now you're the more I, the better I do, the more you're going to take from me. Like that's you're disincentivizing success. You're disincentivizing creation and entrepreneurship. That makes no sense whatsoever. So again, I'm, I got these from online and I know there are a thousand different ways you can look economically, socially, politically at both of these sides. So any of you want to add anything to this, feel free to do so in the comment section of what I'm going to post here today. So that is, to me, that's crazy. And at the same time, here's another thing you're incentivizing economically here. If you, and let's say that you follow through on the liberal view of what government should do to help people who have less and people who don't have something, they have less, let's say, whatever less means, and they're taken from the rich or the people who have more, let's just say people who have more and they're giving it to people who have less, what are you incentivizing? Because you got to understand human beings respond to incentives always. That's what human beings respond to, incentives. There's an NBA team, my hometown team, Philadelphia 76ers. They had a player named Ben Simmons who, for whatever reason, we won't rehash it all here, he wanted to get traded from the Sixers. He didn't want to play for them anymore. The problem is Ben Simmons was on a, he had four years left on his contract that pays him like $30 million a season. He didn't want to play. So he says, through his agent, he tells the Sixers he's not coming. He's not showing up to the team. He will never play for the team again. He's not going to play for them. He will just sit out. He's prepared to sit out until they trade him. The problem with that strategy for Ben was that if he doesn't show up to the games, he doesn't get paid for those games. In the NBA, you get paid, you have a guaranteed contract, but it's only guaranteed if you're actually you know, doing your job, which is showing up to the team. 
if you're injured, that's fine because you're still showing up. You're just injured. You can't play. But if you just say, I'm not coming and I'm prepared to sit out the season, you don't get paid. So what happened is, as of this recording, Ben Simmons has already lost $1 million in salary. Now, he gets paid so much. The season didn't even start yet. He's already lost a million dollars because he didn't show up to a couple of games. Now, the last that I read, just this afternoon when I'm recording this, by the time you hear this, this, is, this whole situation has probably changed in some way. But as I'm recording this, what I last heard was Ben Simmons is now in conversations with Sixers on coming back to the team and reporting. Now, why is he coming back and reporting? Did he change his mind about not wanting to play for the Sixers anymore? Not really. What changed his mind was the incentive of, Mofo, if you don't show up to work, you're not making your money. That, the point that I'm making here is to go along with what I'm saying here with the liberals is these incentives. If a person has less, quote unquote, and the government is just going to give me something to help me, quote unquote, well, what incentive do I have to start helping myself? I have no incentive to help myself if the government is just going to take from people who have already done the creation and they're going to give their money to me. What incentive do I have to go out and ever create anything? I could just sit back and live off the government my entire life. I believe we have systems in place for that already. All right, do these people usually end up pulling themselves up by their bootstraps in the, in the aggregate? Now, are there examples of people who did pull themselves out of having less to getting to having more? Yes. But in the aggregate, when, these, when this data is looked at, when you look at the overall data of take from the people who have more and give it to the people who have less, does this actually make things better in the long run? According to what I've read, now again, I'm no economist, so any of you can check me on this. According to what I've read by an author by the name of Thomas Sowell, who is an economist, who's written books on this exact, this exact theory that I'm laying out right here, his conclusion was no, this does not work that it does not make things better. It does not incentivize the people who have less to actually start getting for themselves. It actually just keeps them on the, keeps them basically sucking on the breasts of the government forever. So they never become self-sufficient. It does not incentivize the people who have more to get, make, keep making more because they're getting it taken away from them. None of these things work. Now again, Thomas Sowell is an economist and he said it, so I'm quoting his word here, paraphrasing it. If you have read of an economist who has a different view, you can let me know. Yeah. I'm no economist. I'm just laying this out. So that's how I feel economically. Let's keep going. We're still on point number two here today. The topic is, am I a liberal or conservative? Let's get to socially. Socially, on the subject of gay marriage and gay rights, I personally, I'm not reading off either point here, but here's what I'm saying about it. I see valid points on both sides of this conversation of gay marriage and gay rights because the conservative point of view is based on an interpretation of the Bible. And the Bible clearly does not agree with uh, homosexual relations. It does not, it clearly does not agree with those relations. I understand that. Now, I do not claim a religion, but I do understand that conservative view based on the Bible does not agree with this. While at the same time, I understand that the liberal view says, well, look, people are, people are free to live how they want to live. And if two men or two women decide that they are attracted to people of the same sex and they want to live together, just give them the right to get married the same way you would give other people the right to get married. I can under, I understand the validity. I can see validity in that argument. I can see validity in the gay marriage argument. I can see validity in the conservative point of view that goes completely against anything that involves gay, uh, LGBTQ, and all of that stuff. I can see both sides of that conversation. So I'm not picking a side in that conversation. I can, I understand both. And I'm open to arguments from either side on that. Although, when it comes to socially, so the gay marriage part, everybody clear on the gay marriage part. All right, cool. Or just gay rights period. Let's just say LGBTQ. Now, the virus, the COVID virus, that has hit us, hit the world over the last two years, it has exposed the liberal argument of, for example, all of you have heard people saying, well, if you do not get the vaccine, you are effectively killing people, right? You're killing people because you have a higher risk of getting the virus and a higher chance of transmitting the virus. Everybody's heard people say that. Some of you may even say it yourselves. Right? We've all heard that, right? I'm not saying whether I agree or disagree, but we've all heard it. Now, saying that, if someone's on the liberal side and they're using that phrase, you're killing people by not getting the, the jab, now, we got to juxtapose that very point with the idea of abortion, because this is another social issue, because abortion is 
Because if you say you don't get the jab, you are effectively killing people. You're not literally killing people because I might not even have the virus. And I might actually have higher immunity by being naturally immunized by having gotten the virus and getting over it than by you by getting the jab. So I'm not literally directly killing anybody. You're saying I'm effectively killing people. But let's just leave that right there. And let's just juxtapose, juxtapose that with abortion, which is another big social issue. Now, abortion, what is abortion? Abortion is literally ending a human life. You are reaching in. This is a woman deciding. And this is people say my body, my choice, right? A woman is deciding to have their body uh, invaded by a machine that will pull out the fetus, pull out this unborn baby, pull it out and abort this life in this life before it has, let's just say, effectively begun. Now, the whole crux of this, like we talked about just yesterday in the you're not listening conversation, the whole crux of this argument is people is moving the goalposts as to what life is. Does life begin on the date of birth or does life begin at a certain point between conception and during that nine month period while the baby is in the woman's body? Now, I will offer the following disclaimer. I am not a scientist. However, let's, put, so let's lay some things on the table. If you're going out and saying that you're killing people by not getting the vax, by not getting the, the vaccine, but at the same time, you're okay with people getting an abortion uh, and killing people is bad. And you're saying killing people is a negative thing. All right, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense to me that you can go and say you're killing people, not getting the shot, but it's okay to abort a baby. That, that doesn't make any sense. And at the same time, you are rallying and protesting, saying my body, my choice but at the same time, mad at people for not getting the vaccine shot. Because you're saying, well, the vaccine shot affects other people. So it's not just your body, your choice. It's a public health issue. Public health issue, quote unquote. While at the same time, you're okay with an abortion, which is literally, again, it's called abortion. What does abort mean? It means to you're going in a certain direction and you're going to stop it and end that process. You are literally aborting a life. So how can you say it's a public health issue to not get the jab? But it's not a public health. It's just a personal thing to abort a life that is in your body, that something you did caused that body to be existing inside of you. But now you're going to do something to eliminate that body. But that's OK. But getting the jab is not is OK for you to make your own choice when it comes to aborting the baby. But it's not OK to make your own choice when it comes to getting the vaccine. That doesn't make sense. I don't understand how someone can have both of those ideas at the same time. That doesn't make sense to me that you can shout about it being a public health issue to get the jab. But it's a personal choice. It has nothing to do with anybody else to abort that, that baby that's inside of your body. Now, again, the baby doesn't just show up in your body randomly. All right, there's something that you did to make that baby show up in your body. Now, some people say, well, what about rape and incest? That is less than 1% of pregnancies are rape and incest. Especially black people. Let's be clear about something. Especially with black people in this whole conversation, especially since the summer of 2020. And people talking about, well, we need to go vote. And every election, you get these black, quote unquote, leaders are not real leaders, but they pose as such saying, well, black people need political power. You know, no, we can't just be giving the black vote to anybody and this and that. You know, black people say this every election, then they go vote Democrat almost every time. And here's the thing. The reason one of the reasons that black people don't have political power is because we just don't have that many people. Now, right? black people is only like 12, 13 percent of the population. You know, the reason why the black population is not growing as fast as other populations are growing is because we abort a lot of our babies. Black people do the black people do more abortions in some big cities in America. More abortions are of black babies than of any other race, even though we're only 12, 13 percent of the population. Now, we're a higher percentage in certain cities, but we're killing a lot of our own babies. We're aborting a lot of our own pregnancies. Let me put it that way, because I might be I might be uh, triggering certain people by saying killing the baby. So we're aborting a lot of our own pregnancies. But at the same time, we're saying, well, get the jab because it's a, a public health issue. And it's not all black people saying this. Let's just say we got some some white social justice warriors, some white liberals who are saying, hey, you got to go get the jab. It's public health. But then at the same time, saying it's my body, my choice. It's time to get abortion. That that part I just don't get. So that's a social issue when it comes to the liberal side socially that I don't quite understand. So if there is someone listening to this who can help me understand this, help me understand the, the juxtaposition of these two points, please help me understand it. Help me understand how the my body, my choice 
argument is used when it comes to abortion. And again, I'm open on abortion. I'm open on a conversation on it. I have not picked the side. I'm not a female, so luckily I don't have to make the decision myself or I wouldn't ever be in a situation to make the decision myself. Oh yeah, that's another thing. All right, men cannot get pregnant. Okay, I don't know if that makes me hardcore conservative by saying that. <laughs> but if you're a man, if you have a penis, you, you can and never will, you cannot and never will be pregnant. I guess, I guess that's a conservative check. I guess it's a check on the conservative side. But anyway, being a man, I will never be pregnant. So I don't have to make the decision personally about getting an abortion or not. But to abort means, again, the very definition of abort is you're ending, you're ending the mission. All right, that is a life. And here's the other thing about abortion is that when someone has, let's say, a miscarriage or they have a baby that they have a stillborn baby or, you know, let's say something like that. They have a miscarriage, let's say, late in the term in their third trimester or something like that, or the baby is born stillborn and dies. People offer their condolences. And what do they say? I'm sorry for the loss of life. I'm sorry that you lost. When someone has a miscarriage, what do we say to people? I'm sorry that you lost your baby. Is this true or is this not? Even if you're a liberal, you have to agree to this point. Someone has a miscarriage, we say you lost your baby. We don't say you lost your fetus. We don't say you lost your clump of cells. We say you lost a baby. So if you call it a baby when you have a miscarriage, then it's also a baby when you have an abortion. So, and again, I'm not condemning or judging anyone who has ever had an abortion. What I'm saying is, if you're going to call it a baby, then abortion is ending a life. That this, and it's the language thing that I think is the biggest part of this whole argument between from what I've heard. Now, again, I'm no expert on this, but when I hear people talking about this, the abortion debate is usually a language thing. People are just using different terminology and kind of changing up the way that they use different words in order to make their points. But this is the essence of, of the conversation is right here what I'm saying. So I want to hear from someone who is on the liberal side, someone who's on the my body, my choice side, somebody who's on the pro-choice side. Help me understand how you can have both of these ideas at the same time. I don't quite understand. That doesn't quite pass the smell test as far as I'm concerned. So now that we got that out the way, I could do the whole episode just on that. But let's continue. Personal responsibility. We're still on point number two. The topic is still, Dre, are you liberal or conservative? This is a long conversation. Personal responsibility. The biggest discrepancy that I found in this area of personal responsibility is these two terms that I mentioned earlier, equity and equality. It appears that the liberal view wants equal outcomes, such as even Kendi laid out in How to Be an Anti-Racist. He made it very clear. I respect the fact that he made it clear what his stance was. I do not like his arguments, but I do like that he was clear on what his, his thesis. Now it appears, again, liberals want equal outcomes. I do not agree with this concept of we need to get everyone with equal outcomes, that is impossible because equal outcomes can't happen when you got unequal people. Everybody's unique. Everybody makes different decisions. Everybody starts at a different point. People have different parents, different environments, different ways that we think. We're all wired differently. We're not robots. How are you going to get equal outcomes? It is literally impossible. And this is why the race hustlers will have an, a job forever as long as people are buying into this concept of equity, meaning everyone getting equal outcomes. These people will have jobs for the rest of their lives because they will never achieve their outcome of everyone getting the same outcome. That will never happen. So from multiple sources that I consulted on this, this whole concept, equity and equality, I found a following through line on this when we're talking personal responsibility. The liberal side wants the government to solve certain problems that when problems, problems, quote unquote, being that everyone's not getting the same outcomes, the liberals want the government to get involved and help balance the, balance the scales, let's say. Whereas the conservative side, instead of wanting the government to get involved to balance the scales, the conservatives want to empower individuals to solve their own problems. So should we get the government involved to solve this inequity or should we let individuals solve the inequity by just empowering them to you know, work on their fucking games? I guess by saying that, I've given away what side I'm on when it comes to that point. That would be deeply on the conservative side. That if, if this is what it means, now again, the disclaimer that I'm putting on everything I've said here today, this is based on my, the things that I looked up when it comes to liberal and conservative. There are thousands of websites and thousands of articles and books written on this subject. So I couldn't go through all of them or I wasn't going through all of them in order to make this episode. So if I'm just misinterpreting the perspectives, then again, anyone who is uh, staunchly liberal or conservative, you can correct me on anything. 
But if, if this is what it means, that the liberals want the government to get involved and the conservatives say, let's empower the person instead of empowering the government, I am 1,000% on empowering the person. Uh, the work on your game philosophy is all about empowering the person and giving responsibility to the person to fix their problems, not going to anyone else, let alone the government, to fix your problems. Point number three. Today's topic is, Dre, are you liberal or conservative? Number three. Perhaps, wait a minute. The whole conversation is, Dre, are you liberal or conservative? Wait a goddamn minute. Wait a minute. Maybe I'm neither one. Maybe Dre is libertarian. Maybe I'm libertarian. Now, my friend Marie Alexandra, she lives down here in Miami. She is a, uh, I believe, registered or she is a, uh, she's, she's out of the closet libertarian. She has concluded, and she even told me this, that I am libertarian. She said, Dre, you're a libertarian. You just don't know it. She said that directly to me. Those are exact, her exact phrase. But as with the other two, liberal and conservative, and with libertarian, I don't know enough about any of these groups to be sure, nor do I know enough to claim a group, nor am I in a rush to do so. I'm not in a rush to, to label myself on any of these. The group that I'm a part of is work on your game. That's the group that I 100% own my uh, registration to, lifetime registration. There's too much info on all of this, as I just said, to sift through all of it. But I found this following point from this website called GenBiz.com. Quote, libertarians say you have the liberty to say, eat, smoke, buy, sell, learn and do whatever you want with whomever you want. So long as you don't hurt anyone or take someone else's stuff away. Live and let live is the libertarians motto. Close quote. Now, that phrase right there, that whole quote, rather, I agree with that on some levels. So we got to offer a dark horse candidate in this whole thing is the libertarian. It's not just liberal or conservative. Maybe I'm libertarian. So now let's move on to point number four. Today's topic, once again, Dre, are you liberal or conservative? Number four, the verdict. The verdict is in, everybody. Here's the verdict. The group that I'm in. The group that I will, I, Dre Baldo, I want everybody to notice. I'm putting this out for everybody to hear it. Make sure you write it down so next time somebody asks you, is Dre liberal or conservative or maybe libertarian? Which one is it? Here's the answer. I'm in the keep it real group. That's the group that I'm in. I'm in the keep it real group. I'm in the intelligence group. I'm in the work on your fucking game group. I don't need a label. I do not need a political label. I am not owned by any political party. I have no affiliation to any political party. I have no devotion to any political party or political ideology. And I don't want whatever ideas that you have, any of you listening to this right now, I'm sure there are some ideas on the liberal and or conservative and or libertarian side that I did not mention here today that you have of them and you are maybe a little bit miffed that I didn't mention here today. Understand something. Whatever those ideas are that you have, keep them. Do not put them on me because I am not claiming any one of these groups. Because there are some liberal things I agree with, there are some conservative things I agree with, and some things I disagree with on both sides. And as far as that libertarian quote there, there are some things in there that make sense to me. And as my friend Marie Alexandra said, maybe I'm just a closet libertarian that doesn't even realize it, and I'm the last one to find out. Especially these days, I don't want to be on, I don't want any label put on me except work on your game. Especially these days when people are deciding to mentally cancel a person just based on what group they're a part of or who they think they voted for or who they support or who they said something positive about or something like that. I don't don't put me in any group. All right, the group that I'm in is what you see on this hat right here. Work on your game. That's the group I'm in. As I stated at the beginning of this episode, I never considered myself part of any group and wasn't even thinking about being a part of a group until this year when I got labeled by these two people randomly in two different conversations. I guess as a way to make things easier for people to understand. When you can label someone, it makes it easier for you to you know, see where they're at and what they're thinking and what position they must have. So whenever they say something, you know whether to listen or not listen. I don't like us doing that. I know we are going to do it because we're human, but I don't like the fact that that is what it is. But that's where we are in the world today, unfortunately. But we got to live in it. Somebody said a couple weeks ago, I remember I was on, I don't know where I was. Maybe it was on Twitter. And somebody said... Um, they saw my picture, my Twitter uh, profile photo, where I'm actually wearing the same thing I'm wearing right now. This, this red work on your game hat and a white t-shirt. And the person said, 
they disagreed with something that I said. So their response was, well, you're wearing a red hat with white letters to represent your brand, LOL. So I guess they were trying to say, I'm connected to Trump or something like that. So that was their reason to kind of mentally cancel me out. All right, this is where we're at. So don't put me in any group. The group that I'm in is what you see here on this hat. It says work on your game. That is the only affiliation that I want. My only affiliation is to keeping it real, to intelligence, and to being as objective as we can possibly be, even though that's controversial now. That's the group that I'm a part of. Do not put me in any political group. My only politics is the politics of the actions that all of us human beings take to further or protect our personal interests. So let me recap quickly today's class. Is Dre liberal or conservative? Point number one, the liberal side has some things that I agree with. Conservative side has some things that I agree with. Both have things that I disagree with. I'm not going to list them all out again. Point number two, side by side comparisons. There are some things on the liberal side that I say do make some sense and some things that really don't make sense. And I would need someone to help me make sense of them. And I pose those questions very clearly here today. On the conservative side, there are some things that do make sense to me and some things that do not make sense and some things that I'm 100 percent on, some things that I'm like, mm, I'm not quite sure. And I do think they have some good points on them. The challenge is, I think the biggest thing with both sides is that it's just the verbiage. It's the language that they use in their conversations that people can't come together and have no real conversations about any of these things. So we can't really get to the bottom of anything. And we get people just further and further apart, which is causing the divisions out here. And that's why you're not putting me in any one of these groups. Point number three, perhaps I'm a libertarian don't know about it. As Maria Alexandra said, Maria, libertarians say, you can eat, smoke, buy, sell, do whatever you want, as long as you don't get in anybody else's way, which I agree with to a certain extent. But I don't know enough more about libertarians, nor do I need to, to, and I don't need to join the group. And the verdict, point number four, I'm going to keep it real, work on your game group. I don't need a label. Don't put a label on me. Do not put me in any one of these groups. I said that clearly right here. So anyone who comes to this episode, now you know. I'm saying it right here. I should have said this at the beginning, but that's what it is. Yeah, I'm wearing a red hat with white letters All right, that says work on your game. That's what it is. So that's the group that I'm in. Everybody clear on that. Send me a text when you get my daily motivation. My number is 305-384-6894. Work on your game. University is open for coaching, for courses, everything that you need. Work on your fucking game. Dre all day.